So Impact 1000 has been coming along quite nicely. Um, they have done anniversary shows in the past. They have done TNA shows in the past. Trying to bring in stars from yesteryear. And, and they've never really had access to the names that they need to have access to. But they've made the attempt. And it's never clicked for me. I don't think they've ever effectively done it. They bring in wrestlers who are in no condition to wrestle, and they have them wrestle. Um, they bring in names that we've already seen a thousand times come in and out anyway. Uh, you know, obviously we love seeing James Storm, but he's an example. Um, bringing in the suicides, and you know Madison Rain and P.D. Williams, and and it's never quite clicked. This time around, this Impact One Thousand they're doing this this episode. They are firing in all cylinders, in my opinion. Like I think they're doing an excellent job with putting this to get putting this together into a show that people actually want to see and care about. Like they've done, as I said, you know, no place like home, or, or actually, and that might have been the canceled show, but I know they were trying. You know, they've tried to do TNA theme stuff, bringing in um, the least in, the least significant members from Aces and Eights, and you, you guys know where I'm going with this, but with this you know, particular show, they've got access to some people that they haven't had access to in the past. And it's making for something that I think we actually want to watch and we actually care about. And this is a great milestone for them to hit 1000 episodes. I feel like they've done way more than a thousand, but you know, obviously I would have to do the math, but they, um, you know, Tom Hannafin announced on the uh, press pass, which you guys know the press pass is a, Press pass to me is a huge joke. BQ is not allowed. Um, the, the only times you've heard me on press passes is because I forced my way in and got the call in information and just showed up anyway. Um, but you know, BQ is not welcome at those. Um, but podcasters with six listeners are. So you guys know I have, uh, I find that press, press pass to be a joke, but whatever. Neither here nor there. Tom Hanfin announced um, that there's going to be a huge 10 knockout tag team. Team championship. Um, I mean, sorry, tag team championship, tag team match. Gail Kim's going to wrestle on this show, folks. We thought we would never see Gail compete again, and she probably is not going to compete a whole lot. Let's be real. We might get a neat defeat or something like that, but Gail Kim is competing. She's teaming with Awesome Kong. She's teaming with Trinity, uh, the knockouts champion, with Jordan Grace, and then there's going to be a mystery partner. Their opponents have a mystery partner as well. Uh, they also will have the real knockout world champion Diana Perazzo, uh, Giselle Shaw, Savannah Evans, Angelina Love, which I'm excited about, and a mystery partner. So they're going to have Velvet Sky in their corner. Some people have been calling for Velvet Sky to wrestle. I don't know why you would do that, um, even at her peak. But she is retired. She's committed to retirement. Hopefully, she is not on commentary for this match. That is my big concern. She stinks. I mean, you guys know... Um, my issue with impact commentary. I would not be reviewing this show. If velvet sky was on the commentary team for impact, she's that bad. So hopefully she's just really in the corner. She's playing a heel and she's just in the corner. I'm really excited for Angelina love. And it's good to see the beautiful people on here. I think they should be the inductees into the next hall of fame. I, I, I thought I've been thinking that for a while now. You could probably still get access to Madison Rain and even Lacey Evans if you wanted to. But it's great to see this version of the beautiful people on here. Uh, Angelina, Angelina Love can still go. She competed for the NWA Women's Championship a few months ago, which I actually thought she should have won. I was kind of upset that she didn't because Camille was getting very stale for me at that point. But um, this is, looks very interesting. We're going to have a couple mystery partners. Um you know, hopefully it's it's a Mickey James, something along those lines. And um, and Mickey James is another one that they have access to now, obviously, that they didn't have access to in the past. They would bring in like, oh, you know, knockout, mystery knockout, and it's Tara and she can't do any moves or, you know, um, but they bring in the suicides and, and things like that. The PD Williams, as I said, and the shows just haven't clicked and just, I mean, this, this match alone saying I've got, we've got Gail Kim, we've got awesome Kong. We've got the beautiful people like this is big. This is a show that we're actually going to care to watch. 
as far as the other matches on this card, I mean, it, it's, it looks really, really interesting. Alex Shelley is going to defend the world title against Trey Miguel. Trey Miguel's done nothing to earn a world title match, but in Impact Wrestling, you just have to have a pulse and a heartbeat. Uh, I could show up tomorrow and get a title match. That being said, Trey Miguel's not a jobber by any stretch of the imagination. He's one half of the tag, tag team champions. He can work. He can go. This is going to be a really excellent match. I would have preferred to see Trey Miguel get there on his own and be elevated into the main event rather than kind of get a throwaway match, but it's uh, it's whatever. We're getting the return of Team 3D, Bully Ray and Devon. Uh, I didn't think Bully uh, Devon was any, in any condition to wrestle, but it'd be good to see him back. Um, he's never had good words to say about TNA, but obviously there's different management, different leadership, different people in place, different ownership. So, you know, but this is probably the last time we'll ever see these two together in the same ring. If it's not at some armory in North Dakota, you know, so that this is a, a big deal for them and we'll see what they've got planned for them. They've got the return, return of feast or fire. This is going to be interesting. They haven't used this gimmick in a while. They last used it to fire EC3. It kind of got to the point that it was a little bit of a comedy gimmick. Um, the previous bef- time before that they fired Grado, who was a comedy wrestler, but impact was a lot more serious at the time, a little more sports based in my opinion. And um, it was well done, but sometimes they do some silliness, like with Velvet Sky getting the briefcase down. They've done some dumb shit. So this will be interesting to see who's in this match and what um, what's the story going in and out of it. They have got um, they say the return of Ultimate X. I don't know why they call it that anymore. I feel like we get Ultimate X every four months. Uh, the last couple haven't been particularly good, in my opinion. I think it was the Tag Team Ultimate X and then an X Division one. Um, you know, the last one I thought was actually entertaining was the Knockouts one. I thought that one was a lot of fun. But this one should be cool because it should be a mixture of, like, the current X Division and then some X Division of old. I don't know who can still go, who's available. Um, I know they've tried to get Amazing Red for stuff for years. I have no idea if he's wrestling. I know he's got the... I think it's House of Glory. He's got that promotion. Um, I would imagine he can still go, though. Um, you know, there's some people who can you can put in here, but it's a good mixture. This show is a good mixture of a, a mixing the old with the new and not just bringing in the really old, you know. Um, hopefully they don't have, like, Ken Shamrock again because that he should have never come around the first time and been around as long as he was on top of that. They're doing a mixed tag team match, Tracy Brooks and Frankie Kazarian versus Eddie and Alicia. We knew this was coming. We saw this. We always knew that's where they were going with it. As much as I don't like watching the same people fight over and over, I can watch Frankie and Eddie because they can both work. So this, you know, I'm looking forward to that one quite a bit. I'm always looking forward to like anything Lish does, obviously. Um, but Tracy Brooks, I don't, I don't feel like she really looked like she was in wrestling shape when we saw her last. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. But it's not like uh, she's going to get in there with Alicia and it's, you know, Mildred Burke or something like that. Um, it's going to be some hair pulling um, face buster, um, you know, Fez press. You, you, know, you already know how that's going to go. But um, this should hopefully end this feud, though, because I think it's time. This is probably the, the, the way to do it. So, you know, as I said, they're just putting together a nice little show here. I think it's something we give a shit about. It's not. It's not bringing in names just for the sake of doing it and and they're past their prime and they can't wrestle. I mean, obviously, some of the people on this show are past their prime and can't wrestle. But I think because they're in tag team matches and they're mixed in with people currently on the roster who can do a majority of the work, I think it can work. So um, very excited, actually, for this episode. They've made attempts at this kind of show before. Hasn't worked, but I think it's working this time around. 